Breaking news here in America. We have a state of emergency here, people. There's a tornado going on in the ventricles of the heart. Everything is going buck wild down there. Now guys, this is a very serious rhythm because the tornado in the heart may deteriorate into V-fib, one of the most deadly rhythms ever resulting in death. Now what exactly is torsadas de pointes? Now the medical definition comes from a Latin twisting of points. It's a very specialized variation of polymorphic VTAC, which refers to the repeating upwards and downwards of ventricular complexes. Now that's just fancy words for a big tornado in the heart, the ventricles are going buck wild, and they're having a ruckus. All right, so let's break it down. What's really going on in the body here? Well, as you guys know, the heart has one main pacemaker and two backup pacemakers. Now in this case, our main pacemaker, the SA node, and the backup pacemaker, the AV node, have lost control as boss pacemakers. And just like VTAC and VFib, the pacemaker cells near the Purkinje fibers in the ventricles have taken over the job and are causing a tornado. So using our five steps, let's interpret this EKG. Step number one, the rate is gonna be very fast. 200 to 250 beats per minute, kind of like a tornado. The rhythm's gonna be irregular and wild, woohoo! Step three, the P wave, you're gonna have none because the ventricles have taken over. Atriums are not doing anything. PR interval, you can forget about it because the atriums aren't doing nothing. And the QRS, which represents the ventricles, are wide and fat, kind of like a tornado. Basically, the ventricles are not squeezing that oxygen-rich blood out to the body, meaning we have no cardiac output and no oxygen to the body, meaning our patient's gonna die probably very quickly. Now, what are some causes of torsadas de pointes? Well, it's usually from unsuccessfully treated ventricular tachycardia, known as VTAC, or even electrolyte imbalances like hypokalemia, low potassium, but a really big main one, hypomagnesemia, basically just low magnesium. Guys, write that down. That will definitely be on the test because we give mag sulfate to treat this. Now, another cause could be cardiac injury that causes low oxygen to the heart, kind of like an MI does, as well as stimulants that speed up the heart, kind of like alcohol, cigarettes, and caffeine, or even illicit drugs. Now, as for the signs and symptoms of this tornado in the heart, all of it stems from low oxygen, this low cardiac output. So we'll see classic complaints like, I feel my heart racing or I feel lightheaded. Now, if your patient is still conscious, which is rare because usually they're completely unconscious, we'll see classic complaints like collapsed, which is our cool little acronym to describe all the problems that we see with low oxygen. And yes, guys, we did spell it wrong on purpose. So C is for chest pain, O is for oxygen saturation that is lower, L is for lethargy or fatigue from this low oxygen, A is from anxiety, usually caused by this lack of oxygen, P is from palpitations that described as a racing of the heart, kind of feels like gallops under the chest, S is for shortness of breath, or what's called dyspnea, that difficulty breathing, E is from an elevated ventricular rate, or heart rate in general, that's one of the biggest indications of this torsadas de pointes. Now finally guys, D is for dizziness, which is also called syncope, or also known as fainting or passing out. So guys, what are we gonna do about it as nurses? Your patient's dying. So here are some priority nursing interventions. But first, what's the main patient outcome goal? Well guys, we always want to reset and restore that SA node and calm down the ventricles to normal function. So the first things first, we're gonna hang the IV of mag sulfate, also known as magnesium sulfate. Good old Magnum Magnesium, our sheriff in town, woohoo! He's here to save the day. He calms down the heart and establishes law and order with his big guns. Now, magnesium sulfate usually does the trick in helping the ventricles relax, but if that doesn't work, then we can always use isoproteranol infusion, which is a sympathomimetic drug Basically, fancy words for it helps the heart pump better. But guys, usually mag sulfate does the treatment. But even if that doesn't work, then we kind of do a hard reset with the SA node, kind of like resetting your iPhone, with an electrocardioversion, 50 to 200 joules of electricity. This is known as our little baby shock, given to reset that SA node, the main pacemaker of the heart. Now, if the patient slips into our two most deadly rhythms, like V-fib or pulseless V-tac, that's when we use the defibrillation, that super size shock. 200 to 360 joules of electricity. And lastly, even a pacemaker may be inserted to help control the rhythm in the near future. 